I have some advanced formatting features or options that I want to show you that you can apply to your report. In fact, some of them we already covered or went over when we applied formatting to our forms. As you recall, there's a lot of similarities when it comes to designing our forms and reports between the two. You'll also see in just a second with the formatting, there's a lot of similarities there as well. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and right click in a blank area, go to the design view, and let's say that I want to go ahead and change the title of the report here. Now the title could have either been created by coming up here and adding a label down below, or coming up here in the header footer group, again on the design tab and clicking on the title button. Either way, if you just come over here, select it, click in it, see the cursor flashing, go ahead and make your changes, then click off in a blank area. That works. Or if you use the title feature, if you click on it again, it doesn't add a new title box. It just, because you already added it by clicking on it the first time, it'll go ahead and select the text within the title box, and then you can just start typing, make your changes, and then click off when you're done. I'm going to go ahead and right click and go to the layout view, and you can see my customer detail report here. And the report here is in table format, or has a table format applied to it. How do you know? Well, when you click, you can see it selects one cell. It selects the entire column here. Not only that, but you see that tag in the upper left-hand corner. When you click on that tag, it selects all the cells within the table. So if you have a table format applied to the uh, data fields and also their corresponding labels, you can do some additional things, as we learned in an earlier training video. You can come up here, click on the Arrange tab, go to the Table group, and add some grid lines. Click on the drop-down arrow. If I choose both, it'll add grid lines around all the cells, including the labels. I mean, because I selected every cell within the table by clicking on that tag. Click on it. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Right-click and go to the Report view. It looks good, except for the top here. Adding a border around the labels doesn't look that great. So what I'm going to do is right-click, go back to the Layout view, and to go ahead and change it, just for the uh, top row, the labels, I want to go ahead and select every label in that row. Go ahead and select the first one, hold down the shift key, click on the second, shift click the third, and so on. Or a quicker way to select the entire row is to go ahead and select the uh, first label in this case. Hover over the far left hand side until your pointer turns into a black arrow pointing to the right. Then click on it and it selects the entire row. Once we have it selected, go up here to the range tab to the table group, click on grid lines, say none. In fact, while we're up there, let's go ahead and change the font color for the labels and maybe also the background. Come up here, click on the Format tab, and in the Font group, there's the font color. Click on the drop-down arrow. Now when it comes to colors and you're trying to tell your friend or email them what color to use, either a theme color or a standard color, well, especially themes, when you find one and you hover over it, that's the name of the color. This one's tan, background 2, darker 10%. That way when they come in here, they can hover over it until they find that tan, background 2, darker 10. In any case, I'm going to come down here and select yellow, which looks good for the uh, font. Also, they have a background color. Come up here, just to the right of the font color, hover over it, background color, click on the drop down arrow, and let's do purple. Let's go ahead and take it for a test drive and see what it looks like. Right click, go to the report view, and okay, we've got the color yellow. We removed the border around it, but why does it look like that there's a border still around it? Well, that's because, as you recall in the design view, I don't know if you paid attention to this, but I went through it pretty quick. Right click, go to the design view. You see the page header section here? It's got the purple as the back color. In fact, if you look in the report header, it has a back color too. All I did is I select the labels down here, like I would up here select it, and give it a color, but that doesn't change the back color. If you want to change the back color, then go ahead and double click on the page header bar to bring up the property sheet for that page header selection. On the format tab, there's the back color, and it's a lighter shade of purple. I could go ahead and delete it and say that there's none. But then if I do that, it looks like it turns it to black, and I don't want that, so let's do something white. Click on the drop-down arrow, and let's see, we got our different colors, or better yet, click on the Build button there. That way you don't have to go through all the uh, different coding for the colors, but go ahead and select something maybe automatic. Let's go ahead and see, right-click, go to the Report view, yeah. Because you can see that we have the top shade, and then we've got white around it, and then we've got the alternating colors with the rows. So. I could be fine with that or go ahead and select a different back color for it. In any case, you get the idea, the difference between the background color and the back color when it comes to our table and the color of the uh, page header section. Speaking of which, if you want to be able to format and make the change to the alternating colors for each row, let me go ahead and right click and go to the layout view and close out of the property sheet. You can come over here to the far left hand side, just outside of that vertical line there. When you click in it, 
it automatically selects all the fields, the data fields within the table down below. Then I can come up here, click on the Format tab, go to the background color, and there it is, Alternate Row Color. Click on the drop down arrow and then choose something that doesn't pop out too dark, maybe something, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit too light. Go ahead and select it. Changed it from a light green to an aqua color there. So we can go ahead and take a break and right click and go to the report view to see what we've done so far. So there's the alternating color there. Also, how about the alignment here? I've got the customer ID and it's aligned to the left. How about if I go ahead and take the customer ID and line it down the center? Well, let's go ahead and right click. We can go to layout or the design view. Either one will work. Let's come up on the Format tab here, and in the Font Group we have the Alignment option, or you can uh, bring up the Property Sheet. Let's go to the Design tab, Tools Group, click on Property Sheet, and there's the text align. Either way, go ahead and click in it, click on the drop-down arrow, let's do Center. There we go, centered everything here within the column. And by the way, when it comes to selecting a column, you can go ahead and click on any cell here, and you can see it selects the entire column here, but more specifically, if you want a specific selection, is focused here, but like I said, when I select one cell anywhere here, I can change the uh, alignment for the entire column there because the alignment is going to be applied to the entire column. What you do in one cell affects all the others. And again, format tab, left or center. You go ahead and close out of the property sheet. Okay, a few other features. For example, if I go ahead and I'm in layout view, if I select one of the uh, fields here in this column and let me go ahead and hover over the right hand sides so I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. If I click and drag that in, and I want it just exactly that size, but you can see it's being cut off. As you recall in an earlier training video, we applied the Can Grow feature to a field. So that means that if there's more text than what fits into the size, the width of this uh, data field, it'll wrap it, and it will grow it that way vertically. So to apply it, go ahead and click on the Design tab, bring up the Property Sheet. Then over here on the Format tab, go ahead and scroll down just a little bit till we can see can grow, double click that to yes. You can see how it's growing vertically now to fit all the text so it doesn't uh, get cut off here. Let's go ahead and do some more formatting. How about conditional formatting? Now I know we covered this, but let's go ahead and do it in the report here. Let's select the um, field for the customer ID, the data field, and let's go ahead and apply some conditional formatting that says, okay, the customers that are between these two customer IDs, let's say 31365 and maybe 32411, go ahead and format that because maybe that's the range that I want to be able to have highlighted a certain color that flags me that says, okay, these are the customers that we uh, had a marketing campaign with and, and that we did very well with that campaign. So to get started after I go ahead and select it in the layout view, or you can do it in the design view, just go ahead and right click, go to the design view for the customer ID, just select it there. Come up here, click on the format tab, go to the conditional formatting group, click on conditional formatting, click on that we want to create a new rule and by default it says the field value is between and then go ahead and if you had two dates you know type in the two dates let me see if I can remember those fields I think it was um, well it could just be a value something close let's type in and then between the other end and then once it meets that condition what should the formatting be hence conditional formatting let's go ahead and select the uh, color to fill in that cell and let's do something, well, that will pop out, but not too brash. There we go. Purple again. Click OK. Click OK. Let's go ahead and right click and go to the report view. And then when I click in the cells here, once it finds it's in between those two ranges there, it highlights it and shows it purple. Now the problem I have with that is that when I print this off, if I right click and go to the uh, print preview, it's not going to show that, is it? So if I right click and go back to the design view, and then bring up the conditional formatting again, format to control formatting, conditional formatting, there's my rule. Go ahead and select it, edit it, and let's do underline and make it bold. Something that's not dependent upon the color there that will actually underline the text, and let's see if that will print. Click OK, click OK, right click, go to the report view, shows it there, right click, go to the print preview, shows it there, hey great. So I can't apply conditional formatting, it's just that it can't be the coloring of a cell. If I want to print that conditional formatting out, that is, and you can see the range here meets that condition, so it's bold and underlined, and then, of course, if we go to the uh, report view, when you click in it, also gives it the color. Next, I want to be able to find out how many records I have here. To do that, I can go ahead and add a totals row to count up all the records. So I can say these are how many customers or clients that we have. 
To do that, I'm going to go ahead and right click, go to the layout view, then come up here on the design tab to the grouping and totals, click on the totals drop down arrow, and let's go ahead and count the values. Click on it, and it adds the total down below for how many records we have up above, and it says a total of 14. Let's go ahead and add a label. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and right click, go to the design view, and there's the total box right here for the records. Now to add a label to the left hand side of it, come up here on the design tab in the controls group, click on label, come down here, click there, and type in record count. Hit enter when I'm done, then I can hover over the border, click and drag that, and put it uh, right about there. Let's go ahead and take a look at it, right click, let's go to the print preview because what you see there is what's going to be coming out of your printer. Let's go ahead and scroll down. See the text box is cut off, that's why I can't see the lower part of the four it looks like, or the one. Right click, go to the design view, or I could go to the layout view. But since I'm here in the design view, click and drag and stretch that down. Go ahead and select the uh, text box. Hover over the bottom middle handle till you see your pointer turn into arrows pointing up and down. And then go ahead and click and stretch that. And then we can right click and we should be able to see it in the print preview much better. And then finally, let me go ahead and go back to our layout view here. And I want to go ahead and do some data bars. And I don't think we have any fields here that's going to do it justice. Well, for example, let me go ahead and open up, double click on the book project report. And there's some values there, dollars. Let me go ahead and right click, go to the layout view. And I want to show you how you can add data bars to these fields. So it's just basically colored little bars that go out so big when you're comparing them to all the others. For example, go ahead and let's select one of the uh, data fields, in which case it selects the entire column. Or you can go to the design view and just select the production cost text box field. Then come up here, click on the format tab come to the control formatting group, click on conditional formatting, click on new rule, and we want to compare to other records. And so depending upon the smallest value, it'll have a preview, as you can see here, of a lesser bar. And then if it had a larger value compared to all the others, it would have almost the entire cell filled in. So let's go ahead and choose a different color. Let's do something that looks all right. And we go ahead and click OK. Click okie dokie, and there we go. Now does it print off? Well, right click, go to print preview, click on it to zoom out, and there we go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.